So we've got to do another video here about another question we've asked. This is probably the one which got the most heated on the night by the sound of it. Although, as we've said elsewhere, they didn't record this one, which is a shame. So we're going to turn up with our cameras next time. So this was a question asked in the June 2023 Housing Committee by John Allen of Just Us, um, who has got a uh, who's who's got a reputation for um, for not for not kind of beating around the bush, which uh, is something I love about him. Um, so basically, his question was around. The, the council failing to have a domestic abuse policy. Now, before the HRA came in, the existing code of guidance at that time said the council should have robust policies in place to basically say how staff should respond to and identify domestic abuse. And then when the HRA came in, kind of watered down slightly, I don't think it was intentional, but it basically said councils need to have policies in place to identify and yeah, respond to, to, to domestic abuse. Now, that's something we brought up with Bedford Borough Council many times. So when we did the domestic abuse report back in 2017, where we just literally gave an account of about a dozen or so victims of domestic abuse to how they'd been failed by the council, which is, I think, quite a significant report. One of the recommendations we put in that report is that they have a policy, you know, which, as they legally should do, which basically sets out what staff need to do. Now, Bedford Borough Council has a policy for their own staff who are subject to domestic abuse, which is great, but they also should have this policy for people approaching them their service so yeah john's john's question was essentially that you know how about making a policy about domestic abuse and he pointed out that this year he worked with a case where he got compensation for a victim of domestic abuse who'd been sent who basically been left homeless and sent back to the abuser and was then subject to further abuse so it's clearly you know it was it wasn't he was just asking for the fun of it he was saying this is a live issue the council should have a policy because the law says it should and actually it matters on the ground because staff aren't aren't responding to homelessness um, to domestic abuse properly and on this one here and also in the previous answer we've had is you know the council said oh you know well we just want to follow the code of guidance but the code of guidance you know is not is you know if you look at the equivalent kind of um uh, the, the guidance on the care act code of practice of it's called the care act it expands great you know the, the, a lot on the law itself but then you've got the adult safeguarding policy as well which goes into even more detail and the adult safeguarding policy to use that kind of symmetrical example it goes into great detail about, you know, first of all, what is abuse, but very, very clear requirements on staff of what they do. So it you know, kind of says any concerns of abuse must report, be reported immediately and, and in all cases within 24 hours. All those kind of really kind of straightforward, bold, underlined you know, um, kind of text to make the point. We think there should be one for domestic abuse that says the same thing. So that so staff you know, I really understand and they have something to refer to that says, OK, if they come across abuse, this is what they must do. And and it would help staff out because, we, you know, we've talked about elsewhere, staff are under pressure to gatekeep some, sometimes. Uh, that's, not, that's no secret. But if there was a policy which says, you know, if this happens, you, you know, if X happens, you do Y, they wouldn't have to run it past their, their boss. You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't come to it. You know, they, if the boss tried to stop them, be like, no, nah, the, the policy says I have to do this. So I'm going to go and do it. So it kind of gives them the the freedom and the the kind of range to then go and to do to do a job that they want to do basically. So, yeah, that was yeah that was that was kind of that was the question. That was the question he asked, and the answer, in my opinion, was a bit disappointing for a couple of reasons. One is that the the answer was that they were disappointed that John had asked the question, which I think is. Uh, I think that's a fair question. You know, councillors should know about that. I think a question I want to ask in the future committee is, are councillors made aware of the details of upheld complaints? Because I don't think that councillors always know how many complaints are upheld and how many, you know, kind of lead to compensation and kind of how bad they are sometimes. So I think that's that's something which is which is disappointing that there's that. We've had it before with council council committee meetings. But the other thing I think was, was kind of disappointing was, you know, the fact that, well, we've got a homes strategy and it's like, but that's not a policy. That's a strategy. That's that's kind of big picture. And actually, in my opinion, the strategy is rubbish. You know, there's loads of missed opportunities there anyway. But there should be the policy is very different from a strategy. You know, that's that's the bottom line. And the fact they have a strategy is not is not the you know doesn't really answer it. So um, and then and then some stats were given, which were good. You know, X number of people were were supported as victims of domestic abuse. Great. You know, we, you know we're all for the council following the law. Our problem is when it's not followed the law. So it's a bit like, you know, we, we are at liberty as members of the public to point out when a council gets it wrong. We don't, you know, the fact that they might get it wrong, you know, only only 10% of the time. That's still 10% of the time. So, yeah. What have you got to say about this, Shannon? So I think for me, it seems 
silly to not want policy. A, like you said, it's a great resource for staff, but also policies are there for transparency for the customers. It's also there for think around domestic abuse. If you are potentially experiencing domestic abuse, I would think that a lot of people do a bit of Googling about what help is out there, about what support is out there. Now, if you've got a policy that someone can sit down and read potentially with a worker, you know, it, it makes sense for people to be able to know what their rights are. And if you're experiencing domestic abuse, you might not necessarily link that with being homeless. So you might not know to go to the code of guidance. It's grand that your staff do. But it's not about the staff. When we're talking about domestic abuse, it's not about the staff. It's about the clients. And I just think it's a missed opportunity. And I think where the answer sort of said, you know, um, the minute we realised there was a failure, we we instantly sort of picked up on that. I would wonder who identified that failure because I have a feeling it was John and it wasn't the council, in which case there's a question there as to why serious cases and potentially all cases are not being reviewed well enough or in enough detail for the council to pick up on those failures straight away. I mean, regardless of the fact that potentially we're all humans, mistakes happen. And I think the disappointing element, I just didn't feel there was a need to say it was disappointing to bring it there. I think it was arguably disappointing that the impact on the client wasn't sort of mentioned. Um, I also think it was a weird move to sort of band about these statistics as, oh, we take it really seriously. This is how many people we've housed, as if that's a really good thing. Um, it's your legal duty. I, I don't really understand like why we need to applaud local authorities doing the bare minimum. Um, like when someone stops at a red light, a car stops at a red light, we don't all clap our hands and say, well done, thank you for following, you know, the road law. Road law. Um, however, but do you see what I'm saying? I think it's when it comes to something that's affecting so many people in such serious ways, it's not good enough to do the bare minimum anyway. And if you can't get that right, we're giving you the answers here. The answers are, we start off with a policy, ideally co-produce, and I'm sure local charities would be up for that. I'm sure potentially survivors of domestic abuse might be up for that, depending on where they're at. Is a really good way to start showing that you do genuinely care about domestic abuse? Yeah, I, you make a lot of good points. I, I think... Having a policy is, is in part about being transparent and being accountable. And, and a cynic in me would say, and I know this is something Will Flack said in a, a diff for a different situation a few weeks back, but he kind of, you know, if a council has a policy, then it's like another thing they've got to comply with. And, you know, they, as you say, they're struggling to comply with anything right now. And and, and it's it, I think what you're saying is absolutely right. I think it, it just shows how far culturally our profession has got in terms of it is seen as a good thing. You know, it's kind of something that people are proud of when they manage to follow the law. And 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 it's so it's so normal now for councils to break the law that that it's it's well we just come kind of along you know it's it's a long way from where it should be at really um so so yeah I agree with you and and I guess with the you know with the um the work we do with Citizens UK and the, the ask that we had for the border mayoral candidates they you know they've all committed and including Mayor uh, Tom Wooten um they've committed to making a co-produce homelessness policy. You know, well, we'll put this domestic, we'll put domestic abuse in there then, because it's very much a homelessness issue. So I wonder if there were really good opportunity there. And and I and I I don't know if Tom Wooden knows what he signed up for, but that's that's the sort of thing it's going to be in there. So yeah, I think um, yeah, I think it's a, a you know, there's there's certainly a lot more we can do with this, but yeah, I think and and I, and I you know I, I'm sure that John is not going to get put off asking some more difficult questions in future meetings. So yeah, just another piece of advice and it's something I learned, learned when I worked at Morrison's actually was if someone has made a complaint or they've come to you with an issue one of the quickest ways to disarm the other person is to apologize now ideally you would also mean that I think for me it was actually a little upsetting that there was no sort of apology there was no even insincerely oh sorry 
like that would have been better than nothing I think and the fact that sort of the the staff were then thanked towards the end of that question I think if the the client who had gone through the situation was listening to that would they be proud of their answer and I think this is where co-production can become really useful if and data protection almost as well if if you're doing anything professionally you've got to think about how your client would feel listening reading whatever to that bit of information and I can guarantee if client was listening to that would I don't think that they'd be happy with that response I think, I think it hints at this very weird relationship between counsellors and the council. I know when I worked in Bedford Borough Council, like if a, if a, if a query came in or an inquiry came in from a councillor, people would shit themselves, you know, bosses would be running around trying to come up with an answer. So there seems to be something about that which is wrong. And, I, and I, this is something which I've, I've had various politicians remark about Bedford, and they've kind of remarked on how defensive Bedford is. And, and I remember from back in the day when we started Just Us Up was, the council, yeah, as you say, would never apologise. They never sounded like they they were sorry. They would they would just sounded angry. You know, as I say, not we're not talking Lee Fanko here, but talking about some of his predecessors. They'd be angry that you've raised the issue, and that's and all that does is you know little tip for any council workers is you know if someone like me or you know John when we're doing this stuff, if you come back with that response, we don't give up. We just go harder. You know, we and we and we you know get even more kind of you know likely to to put questions like this into a housing committee, for example. Or, you know, kind of say say more and more clear cut things. So I think it's an own goal for council workers anywhere to respond to good, sound, solid complaints and criticisms without, you know, as you say, just kind of yeah, yeah, you're right, saying actually, do you know what? Yeah, we we, we need to do better. You know, we're, we're really sorry that happened to that person. You know, and then you know, they, I mean, they can't go into too much detail to defend it, but in terms of like personal information but you know they, that would that would be a far better way you know you, you're then gonna you're then gonna disarm people like us who are gonna keep coming you know we, it's gonna you know it's gonna kind of lead to well what sort of questions do we ask on the next committee do we ask questions which are gonna you know be be helpful for everyone or we're gonna ask questions which kind of you know shine some light into things they don't want to shine light, light shine on so i think criticism as well can be such a great opportunity for a council like even if you take away all of the emotions, all of the experiences and all of the people from it, the stats you can get from the fact that, you know, say one year you've had 15 complaints, but actually you've done this, 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 this and this in response to that. Look how amazing we are. And the next year you've only got five complaints or whatever it might be. You can show real improvement. And I can guarantee um, there's got to be more funding out there as well. If you're actually honest about... The, the struggles that your local authority, and I'm not necessarily just talking Bedford here, if you're honest with, say, central government about, look, we, we can't cope with our sleeping numbers because this is the real number, then it's got to surely increase funding and to look good for you because you're trying to do something about it. I would also argue that councils should be far more willing to, to just publicly declare to their voters, their constituents, why it is they can't, you know, can't meet meet kind of requirements and kind of raise because ultimately voters, you know, we do, yeah, you know, we do run the country in one sense. You know, we we do kind of you know vote people out of power if they're doing a really bad job. Um, so I think there's there's the scope to do that as well. And I think there's there's a really good quote I remember from David Ford when he when he when he went to the Expert Link training, which by the way is amazing. Check out Expert Link. But he used, I think, he used a quote by someone called I think her name was Myrna Lewis, and it was about this deep deep democracy, and it was. I think if I remember correctly, it kind of came out of the post-apartheid South African, um, you know, kind of process of re of recovering and, and kind of healing from from all that went on. And the thing she said was that, you know, if if um, if me you know, if members of the public or you know part part of a population um, are treated badly, they don't go away and just kind of be silent about that. They they'll they'll you know, get heated and they'll go and potentially sabotage stuff. So, you know, we saw it with Brexit and, you know, that whole vote was, it went, you know, Brexit won the day and a whole bunch of Remainers very openly tried to sabotage what was happening. And the same would have been the case if, if Remain had won and the Brexiteers were no longer, you know, with no doubt of sabotage things. So, 